Hello, my name is Saket Modi. I am a financial trainer and consultant. IFRS 9 requires impairment allowance to be recognized based on expected credit losses. The general approach requires an entity to track changes in credit risk. There are three stages in the general approach. Financial instruments are recognized in stage 1 on initial recognition and subsequently until there is a significant increase in credit risk. Stage 1 also includes financial instruments that are considered to be low credit risk. The impairment allowance on financial instruments in Stage 1 is based on 12-month expected credit losses and adjusted in every period for changes in the risk of default. The 12-month expected credit loss is equal to lifetime expected credit loss times probability of default in the next 12 months. Financial instruments are transferred from stage 1 to stage 2 if an entity concludes that there is a significant increase in credit risk since initial recognition. The impairment allowance on financial instruments in stage 2 is based on lifetime expected credit losses. Financial instruments are transferred to stage 3 if they are credit impaired or in default. The impairment allowance on financial instruments in Stage 3 is based on lifetime expected credit losses. Financial instruments on which lifetime expected credit losses are provided may be moved back to Stage 1 if the events that led to significant increase in credit risk no longer exist. In this case, the impairment allowance on these financial instruments will be reversed and recognized based on 12-month expected credit losses. There are some key considerations in the application of the IFRS 9 expected credit loss general approach to impairment. What is significant increase in credit risk? What is the definition of default? What is the impact of collateral on assets classified in the three stages of the general model. How is interest calculated on assets in the different stages of the general model? When can an asset be moved from stage two to stage one? 